You might have noticed in the backdrop here on my workshop wall, we've got a lot of sores. Well, sores ain't sores. A bit like people, they all behave differently. So in fact, it's the, got to do with the shape uh, and the geometry of the tooth that makes the difference, as well as whether it has a back on it or no back, its length, its shape, all these variables. What I'd like to do is just help explain some of the differences. So here we have a nice pair of Veritas tenon saws. One says rip, one says cross cut. One is nine teeth to the inch, the other is 12 teeth to the inch. What's the difference? Come over to the board and I'll show you. So let me help you understand the concepts here. There's some key words which we, we're gonna to need to look at here. The first one of those is rake. So what is rake? Rake is the angle vertically of the front of the tooth. So with a, with a rip saw here, so ripping is cutting along the grain. So when you look at that, your, the front of the tooth is going to be more vertical. This is the extreme rake. Let's just do it extreme, straight up and down. So that's the front of the tooth, right there. So we've got that straight up and down. Commonly, it's a bit too aggressive, so I'll file it back a little bit. So with a cross-cut saw, though, what happens with this is it's going to be leaning, the, the rake is greatly reduced, leaning right back. So if that was vertical there, we saw that, so that was a rake of zero, dead vertical. Commonly though, we tip back 10 degrees or so in there. So the cross cut saw though, these are tipped right back. Now the thing worth remembering with this is it's all based around filing with a triangular file. It's an equilateral triangle which means that every angle is 60 degrees, right? Each one of those. So wherever the, the file is placed in here, that's a 60 degree angle. So as you change, bring it up this way, so you're changing the angle there. So it's just worth keeping that in mind. It's always gonna be 60 degrees in, in the bottom corner of every tooth. So the cross cut, the rake is greatly reduced because we don't want to be as aggressive on the front of the saw. So there's the important one, rake. So the next concept to get our head around is the concept of fleam. So fleam relates to the angle that the, the, across the front of the tooth. So with a, a saw file for ripping, those are basically filed straight across. So you've got our teeth here and the file goes straight across. So I'm looking down at this from above. So I've got every second tooth hangs out the other side a bit because of set, which we'll get to in a minute. So the front across there is dead straight all the way across. With a cross cut saw, this is really different. But with a cross cutting saw, the front of the tooth, every second tooth, is filed the opposite direction. So what we end up out of it, let me just draw this in here. So here's the, we're look, again looking down on the top. So what you end up with is these points out here. And those points uh, on either side alternating are like little blades. Those blades slice across the fibers so that then the gullet of the tooth in here, that void in between the tooth, can take the material out. So it's like it pre-cuts the fibres either side to make it a nice clean cut across the grain. So they just behave really differently. So the next one to look at is the whole concept of set. So set is the way that the teeth, every second tooth is bent like this, alternating, sticking out wider. So the wider the set of the saw, the more, I guess, the saw flops around in what's known as the kerf. And the kerf is that bit of the hole left after the saw has taken it out. So the sloppier it gets in there, the easier it is to turn, the easier it is to push it in many ways, but the less accurate it's going to be. So something like a dovetail saw, what we want is, which are normally filed for ripping because we're cutting down the grain, is normally we have 
a very little or almost no set because you want a really nice tight fit. But if you're trying to cut your way along some, some you know, softwood or something and you've got no set, the fibres will be closing in and binding on the saw plate. So you'll have different degrees of set depending on what you're doing. So in the old days, a carpenter didn't just have one or two saws, actually had a whole cluster of saws, a quiver of saws, and those saws were used, they all filed a bit differently. Whatever he was doing, he knew exactly which saw to grab to do the job. And we should be like that in our thinking as well, in a selection of saws that we use and that we buy. Um, so we've got rake, which is the angle of the front of the tooth. So a ripping tooth is going to be more vertical. Cross-cutting tooth, and the, the rake is going to be leaning right back. So it's a gentler in its action there. With a fleam, which is the angle across the front of the tooth, so with rip, we're pretty mostly filed pretty much straight across, creating a whole series of chisels. And those little chisels just take the material out and punch it out. Whereas the cross cutting with the rake, the, sorry, the fleam on those angles like that, it creates these little knives out each side. So they pre-cut the fibers across the fibers so that the saw can take the material out. That will do a cleaner cut. And the set varies according to what you need it to be. Then of course the other thing I guess is the number of teeth. Now it's traditionally there are two ways of measuring this. One is teeth per inch and the other is points per inch. I think this is another one of those issues across the Atlantic between the, uh, the North America and the English. So we've got a saw here like this. So this is just when you're, when you're looking at one in a packet. So the distance in one inch, roughly 25 millimetres across here, that distance in there, the number of points. So this is, this is points per inch. That will be one, two, three, four, right? But if we're talking in uh, teeth per inch, that's there, there, what we've got here is, let me see, get this right. We, we, what, what we're looking at is full numbers of teeth in that spot. So let's start from here. So what we've got in there over that inch is going to be, it'll always be slightly different depending on the saw and the size of the tooth. So that inch may in fact work out at, as being two full teeth to the inch. So it's a bit confusing. Is it points per inch, teeth per inch? The finer the saw gets, the less of an issue that is. But that's where you'll get that discrepancy between points and teeth. It's really not a big one. So don't be worried about it. What is more important is the angle um, of the front of the tooth uh, in relation to the run of the saw plate. We've got the, you know, vertically, we've got the angle of the thing is filed across, which is our fleam, and we've got the degree of set. So I hope that helps to demystify some of this stuff because it's sort of a bit hard to get your head around, but I just find it makes a really big difference. I can pick up any saw and I can understand what it, the intent was in the way it was either made or later filed by whoever owned it to see what they wanted to use it for. And then I can decide whether I want to keep filing it in that form or whether I actually want to change it. So it's not exact, there's no hard and fast rules. Sometimes we'll do a hybrid. I can do a, re, a saw which does a little bit of both better. It, it might have a bit more vertical of the flate here, but still be filed with some, a bit of fleam in it. So it kind of works a bit of both. So it's, it's not one or the other. Sometimes you do a bit of a mix and that's just one of the delightful things. As I said before, all saws are different. They're a bit like people, they all behave differently. But as we use them, we get to know them. And you'll know which saw you want to reach for when you want to do a particular type of cut. So as I've explained it, for a saw like this, the way that it's filed, this is filed for ripping, for cutting along the grain. It's got big teeth, so it's made to be aggressive. So you want to move some material, cut along a board, this thing's going to get you there fast. 
contrast that with a saw like this, which is filed more for cross cutting. We've got smaller teeth, but the geometry of the tooth is different. The, the filing across the front of the teeth is different. So that will cut cleaner across the grain and not so quick along the grain. So as we approach these saws, we know that the rip tenon saw is going to cut cleaner along the grain, which is the way tenons are cut. We're cutting along the grain when we're cutting a tenon. Whereas the cross cutting one is going to give you a cleaner cut when you're working across the grain. So instead of a whole lot of little chisels, which are taking out the material, we've got a whole lot of little knives that are shearing the wood as it goes across the grain. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit about the difference. So whenever you look at any saw, you can often look at the teeth and work out what it was intended for. And uh, so the same thing happens when you're selecting a saw to buy.